You're rolling. Okay, so we're right into it. Uh, so first note, this is not a new podcast. We're not watching a podcast, <laughs> so don't worry. There's not a new one that you need to follow. Um, no, this is just a one-off conversation. Uh, Justin and I, two-time world champion CrossFit um, and podium athlete. So and Matt, welcome, welcome five-time to five-time champion. <laughs> welcome to the one-time show. Yep. How you doing? Doing good. Uh, yeah. You want to tell the people where we're at? Yeah. Well, we're in Austin. I mean, here for the Rogue Invitational. Mm-hmm. Not competing this year, but uh, it's just hard. I'm like we stepped away to watch the, or do the podcast. Now I'm like, all right, that's good. I was watching that final event. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I was, was starting to get freaking fired up a little bit. Yeah, that but, final was good. So why? Uh, first off, why why aren't you competing? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like if anybody follows like me at all, I mean, they know that this year at the games wasn't the performance that I was looking for, mm-hmm. and like don't really talk about it i mean i think it's like a double-ended sword you know like you say like people like oh dude like what happened and then you if you say what happened it's like oh he's making excuses and if you don't say anything then everyone's like oh he just did terribly yeah so it's like uh there's no win there's there's no win you know but uh just for me i think just it was the right thing i'm young i want to be in the sport for a long time want to make sure that when i am competing like i feel like i'm in contention to win and i think the feeling that i had at the games was not that and i wanted to make sure that uh, physically, I was ready to like throw down. And I think if I decided to do rogue again, I might be like coming in with some bumps and bruises and not feel like I can give it a hundred. And then probably those bumps and bruises are going to get a They're little gonna, bit worse. Yeah, yeah. and carry it into the season. I mean, rogue is such an awesome event. Like I want to do it every year. I mean, you yeah. see the events; they're so cool. But to finish the games and then have three months to be at your fittest again is uh, well, is pretty hard. Well, not only are you then ramping back up three months after the most brutal competition yeah. but then it's taken away the rest time before the open again yeah. so not only are you ramping back up you're cutting your your off season in half yeah yeah so definitely good call um yeah. i think yeah I, I would love to see more athletes do that of like yeah i could compete but that doesn't mean you should yeah you know? and like, like it, it depends on the athlete too i mean there's a lot of guys i think out there at rogue this weekend that's like hey like who knows where i'm gonna finish i'm just gonna like do it because i can mm-hmm. and I've never done well with that kind of mindset. Like I need to feel like when I'm going into yeah. a competition that like I'm here to like compete for the top. Yep. And if I'm not doing that, like I might do team or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Like like once I go team, it's because I don't feel like I can win anymore. Yeah. That's why I said like I'm not gonna be that athlete towards the end of my career, like, oh, I'm just gonna go individually for fun. It's like, yeah. no, every time I'm out there, the goal's to win. And if I don't do that, that like obviously did not go as planned. Yeah. Um so I, I was talking to Daniel a little bit yesterday. So anyone doesn't know, uh, Daniel Robbins, lab management. Uh, he's your manager, agent, and very, very good yeah. friend now. Like it, it's kind of funny. Like so, Daniel started under O'Keefe, um, and obviously O'Keefe and I are attached to the hip. And it's like over the last <laughs> couple of years, like we've done a couple of trips where like O'Keefe and I will get in, and then you and Daniel will come yep. in, and like we're all hanging out, <laughs> and it's like oh, it's the same pair. Yeah, like you know, you guys are playing. Um, playing cards in the hotel lobby yeah. and it's like yeah you're attached to the hip it's kind of convenient Pretty that awesome. it's your really good friend that you yeah. get along with um but when i was talking to him he was filling me in a little bit on what was going on before the games and like you just said you're like it's a lose lose if you come out and be like hey i'm dealing with this or you just go out and have a poor performance not what you're expecting um but he was telling me a little bit about some injuries you were dealing with before yeah. the games um and once again he was running me through so i'm like that's some shit o'keefe that i would do uh so can can you fill in a little bit on that and how are the injuries doing yeah no i think uh like going into the games i think i had everything that i was dealing with under control but then just the preparation was just not there you know and i think i have two quotes on my wall like confidence comes through preparation and that my best will be enough and Mm -hmm. i think i can lean on those on every competition i've ever done and then i think going into the games this year it was like, okay, well, like, I know that I've done everything I can given the circumstance, yep. but like, it's hard to be confident when that preparation is like, obviously there's ups and downs in your training, but like, when you feel like you just can't prepare because you have things going on is uh, just a little bit different going into the games, not knowing that. And then obviously didn't have a hot start, but uh, I think it was just more so like that training that I wasn't able to do. Like I had some shin splints going on where I wasn't able to run yep. uh, pretty much at all. I mean, that's big going into the games. Yeah. The running like, is like the number one component. It's in almost, and especially when you get out to like North Park. I mean, the almost every event in North Park has a running aspect. Well, even when there's it. not running in it, there's yeah. still the transitions. If you're I'm running saying. back and forth five times on 100 yards each. like Yeah. And if you're doing any type of aerobic <clears throat> training, like it's like biking, 
running and like m- maybe like some rowing and stuff yeah. like that. But those are like the two main things. And uh, just wasn't able to do that, which is like, like I know, understand that every athlete's dealing with something at the games. So like, it's not like I'm the only one that was out there. I'm sure there's other guys that. No, kind of it's the same as like when somebody says on. like, "Oh, if I didn't have that blunder on that event, I yeah. would have. That would have been 50 points, and I would have won." It's like, yeah, but if you're having the ideal scenario for yourself, you have to apply it to everyone else yeah. as well. Like everyone makes mistakes. Everyone's dealing with aches and pains. You know. Yeah. 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 So not trying to make an excuse for it. And then I had something going on with my shoulder to where like, it was just like a complete like lost complete activation in it. Like I had no yeah. idea what was going on. I like trained in the morning. It was like pretty good. And then just came out for the second session. And like, I did like, like get my elbows together yep. and this arm was just like this. Yeah. And I like, no matter what I did, was I, that like, like your lat engagement or is it more in the shoulder? Dude, it was, I think it was more so like kind of in the back from what we did. It was ended up being a lot of like sub scap and stuff yep. like that. I like my coach, Jesse up in Squamish yep. is like, awesome i mean yeah. the crew that they have up there is like it's like a hidden gym like their recovery team like they have in-house pt chiropractor yeah. like with their clinics it's just that in the gym yeah you know and then plus they're around all these athletes and if anybody knows squamish canada it's like there's tons of skiing you got like whistler right up there mm-hmm. like tons of like action sports people in mountain bike accidents all the time and you're in a crossfit gym and a powerlifting gym like you're just around so many people that do things at a high level and, and yeah all the doctors are familiar with what you do yeah and so i ended up going back up there getting like awesome treatment and then going into the games i think everything was under control like it wasn't because i i didn't run slow or or i didn't that because my shins hurt it was just more so the, the prep, training yeah, going it prevented it. you from from training the way that you wanted to train yeah and so it's, yeah yeah and then same thing fitness, with the shoulder like i got it back under control going into the games but then there's that two or three week splint where like I couldn't have done I didn't do anything with my shoulders so I think it's just things like that probably more affect like that mental side and I think the mental side of the game is what has such a big factor on your performance than most people give it credit for like yes I think I I agree completely because you look at all the competitors on paper for the most part, yeah, everyone's squatting the same. Everyone's rowing the same. Like everyone has like little strengths and weaknesses, but then it's like, all right, who can handle it going into Sunday? Who can, you know? Yeah, it's we're all coming into the events with about the same deck of cards, and now it's like who can just play a little bit better and yeah. keep that mental strength? Oh, exactly. <clears throat> so, so then let's talk about during the games. So mm-hmm. you came in, you know, it's not an ideal prep leading in. But your body feels good. Um, so mentally there, like I'm trying to put myself in your shoes of, well, I have been in those shoes of like, okay, I'm dealing with an injury. I can't train perfectly. For me, it was almost, obviously I wouldn't wish it on anyone. I don't want it to happen to myself again, but it can be very, it can laser focus you in. Yeah. You know, like, so like I've had like, I was dealing with like hip bursitis one time and it was like, I can't squat. I can't do anything below parallel. I can't run anything. So it was like, Okay. I'm, I'm going to do upper body and grip strength. Like I'm going to have grip strength of a chimp when I'm done, when my hip is better. And then you go into competition and you're just like, yeah, it's tough, but it's like, nope, I can only do what I can do. Yeah. Um, so walk, walk me through that, like kind of through the weekend of the games of like coming in and you're feeling a little bit underprepared, but good. Yeah. And then like where in the event was it kind of like the writing on the wall of like, oh shit, like that prep wasn't good enough or like hey i'm not going to get the top spot yeah i mean i think it was it it was a hard weekend because like and i think the thing that's been hesitant for me to come out and say anything is because the past two years i was able to stand top of the podium and like i don't think anybody goes in the game saying like my prep is freaking awesome i am the fittest i've ever been i feel amazing i am gonna crush it like there's always these ups and downs going in to the games and there's there's doubt you know like you don't know how it's gonna end up and i'm like well like you don't actually know until you're out there. Yeah. You know? And I think that's kind of what I was holding on to going in. And I think I started the event one and just, it was a all that stuff that happened in the past, like a couple months. And then you go into the first event and I'm thinking about all those things. I like emptied my breakfast into a trash can before the event, you know, which is not uncommon, but like I haven't done that the past two years at the games. Yeah. And then you do a 40 minute workout where I just emptied everything yeah. and then didn't replenish eight shit twice on the bike. Uh, 
with the same guy, which is pretty cool. I guess. <laughs> uh, and then kind of carried that into then the next event you had like you finished the event we went back it was like 30 minutes before i had to start warming up again yeah and then obviously i tried to have like some applesauce like fruit snacks yeah, trying yeah. to get things in but then you get into this pig flip long workout to where like well it's a grind it's heavy so it's like you know like there's some endurance workouts where you're like all right i can have a little bit of my stomach but then the strength stuff you're like oh is this gonna squeeze too much yeah, yeah and it was just like nothing was in that event like i had my gas tank was like, at zero like the best way I it can, was i've never felt like that in an event before i've i've talked about this before and like I've, i haven't found the right words to describe that feeling where you know and the the way i describe it is i feel empty or i feel yeah. hollow like i'm here i know like i'm i'm here but i was like i don't feel like myself like you could walk up to a 225 pound bar and it's glued to the floor yeah um so yeah, all right. So hitting the pig workout with that feeling, that's yeah. got to be rough. It was not good. And then, I mean, I was like... Like who, who's who's around? Obviously, uh, you have your coach with you. Yeah, so it was... And, and, I mean, me and Ellie are both competing and then we have our coaches, Adam and Jesse. Yeah. And like we kind of like... Adam goes with whoever's heat is first. Yeah. So like okay. if, if Ellie's doing the workout first, he goes with her, I'm with Jesse. And then... Uh, Jesse kind of helps prep while Adam's out there and yeah. then like we come over there and then finally like the whole group Yeah and then together. they relay all the information yeah. that they took um, from that so, event. So Adam's in that first year. I mean Adam's obviously like he's our CrossFit coach you know and mm-hmm. Jesse's been around CrossFit since forever but like Adam's the main guy for that and yeah. then Jesse kind of helps with stuff like the pig and sandbags so, and like uh, So Jesse is he's the strength coach uh, what, what's his specialty though? Powerlifting so, so or he, strongman? So he, he powerlifting. Power, but yeah. he's done, obviously, yeah, he's like t- a bunch of things. Yeah. He's, he's done powerlifting. He's done strongman competitions. And then he owns an affiliate, yeah. which is like kind of is what ties everything All of it together. together yeah. you know? And he's actually like worked at the CrossFit Games for like HQ. He's ran uh, like the West Regional for, okay. for CrossFit oh, I, I, I didn't stuff. I didn't know he was that involved in CrossFit. Yeah, oh, yeah. so he's been involved in it like yeah. deeply and stuff. And yeah, then over I, the past few years, he has not been just focusing on his affiliate. But did, did he come to Vermont when you came up? I know, no, I know. But, but we we did a. I had like a. I called him because we do sessions twice a week on Facetime with him. I could have sworn I met him though. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Su- super nice guy and super knowledgeable. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you're in competition, and that's another thing I want to talk about of Ellie. So let's bring that up later of like yeah. just the dynamic of both of you competing. Like yeah. that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so all right, you're going through the competition. That um, were, were you able to stay stay mentally positive? Like when you saw the writing on the wall, was it kind of like okay, it is what it is. I'm still going to give it, or was it like t- take me through that? Yeah, I mean, and then I think we, I ended up wrapping up day three with the the handstand obstacle course. Yep. And that was like, things have not been good. I've been like dizzy, lightheaded, yep. didn't know really what was going on. I'm like warming up for the handstand workout and like, just like my equilibrium felt so off. It was weird. Huh. Just like, I think I was just completely depleted starting yeah. the weekend, you know? Um, and then like do that workout and it's just an execution style workout for me yeah. like uh gymnastics like the, the skills are, skills aren't crazy so it's skills just aren't crazy run. and that's a strength of mine you know going out there and executing I'm like all right this is a time to like get this back on track mm-hmm. you know and going into that event was just like all right like I, I can't attack this event like i normally do but like i'm gonna be the best one out there executing it yeah. and that was kind of like the goal just I, like I, love, I love hearing that yeah love just it. like that singular focus on that workout and like going out there just like in my lane the whole time like i know roman's crushed the first two events yeah like he's already out there and i'm going through do the pullovers on the way back i like stumble a little bit on my handstand walk and i like the crowd like goes crazy i come down I'm like frick i probably got passed by roman yeah and then just finish and i was like the first one to finish and i was like Oh shoot! Yeah, that was awesome. I think those cheers actually might have been for me back yeah. there. You know, like it was uh, pretty crazy coming off those first two events because I was like nowhere to be seen. Yeah. And I think you're, it was you're, you're sitting there like, dude, the first two events, nobody loves me anymore. Oh, one hundred percent for me. Great. I mean, th- that was like a big part of it. Like, I think I come onto the scene. I mean, you related to this where like you had a lot of success early on. I got third and then first, first. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's also weird because I never thought about winning the games coming into CrossFit. Like that yeah. was never the goal. Yeah. I thought it would be a cool bucket list check mark to say that I was a CrossFit Games athlete. Yeah. You know? And I was like, I'll train while I'm in college. 
maybe it'll happen. Yeah. Like, it'll be super cool. And then next thing I know, I got third. Like, yeah, I, you hit I, the my podium. My goal was top twenty <laughs> on that online qualifying. Yeah. Thing. And then after the first day, I was like, dude, I might be able to get top ten. And then all of a sudden, I get third, and I was like, I don't even know how it's possible. Like, yeah. I'm gonna go to freaking Aromas, and I'm gonna like. This was a fluke. Like I was yeah. going to embarrass myself when I got third overall, and yeah. it was just like this crazy thing. And it was like almost going into year two was like, oh shoot, well, like maybe it was a fluke. Who knows? I do my semifinal, I get third in my semifinal. I'm like, well, I got third at the games yeah. last year. I got third in my semifinal. Like there's eight other semifinals. Like yeah. who knows what's going to happen to the games? You win, you're like, oh, well, that's that's crazy. That worked out. Yeah, you know, and it's not like it's not like I don't train hard. I don't work hard. I don't like. Every single workout, I feel like I can win. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't go into any workout thinking like, oh, like I'm trying to get top ten here. Yeah. You know, like because you never know like when you can have those moments. You know, yeah. so it's uh, and then obviously I think it just kind of all caught up this year of like actually focused on trying to win. You know, okay. I think kind of like just like the pressure and then in that workout, I think was like will be one of my fondest memories of the games because. It was crazy to see. I get freaking chills thinking about it. Is like all the cheers that I got in that workout, yeah. and I'm like not even close to the top. It was so cool to see that the community like they like me you. for who I am, yeah. and like coming here this weekend. Like we're at the Rogue Invitational, and I'm doing like some meet and greets. I'm not competing. It's freaking bittersweet. Yeah. I'm mad watching the competition <laughs> a lot of times, feeling like I can be out there, especially because I feel healthy right now. Yeah, but I'm like. But, what, what, but once again, you knew your prep coming in wouldn't be healthy. Yeah, yeah. But because you took the time off, exactly. you are healthy. Yeah, now. I mean, I manage the volume like crazy, and it's nice just to feel good right now. It's like, all right, like going into the season now, I'm like, I'm excited, juiced up. You get to see this competition. I'm all fired up. Yeah. But you do these meet and greets, and I'm like, I walk in, and I'm like, there is a line out the freaking door. Well, you, like, you, I, I can't see where it ends. I'm like, it is... It's like, it's so cool to see that like... Boy, like your nightmare kicks in when you're showing up for an appearance, and like... Like my fear every time is like nobody's gonna show yeah, up. Oh, 100%. E- even when you're a couple time champion, you're like, dude, what if nobody shows up? Yeah, this like is, I'm not even competing like, here. They're I'm, here to watch all the athletes. Be, it's gonna be the most awkward converse, like ride home with O'Keefe. Of, yeah. like, and then and then you show up and it's like, oh yeah, okay, that was all in my head. <laughs> yeah, sweet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's been really cool just to see like the community getting around. Like everyone's like, oh, I've been following along with their YouTube channel. It's been yeah. so cool to see you and Ellie hanging out. Like, love what you're doing. Keep doing. We're rooting for you next year. It's just like, okay. I mean, I think people actually might like me. You know, yeah. like, it's like a, it's like that pop, not a popularity contest, but or contest by any means. But it's just like nice to see that the community is like still behind me. Yeah, of course. Of um. All right. So during the games, would you say that the handstand walk was like was that was that your highlight moment of the weekend, or did you have more more events after? I that? I mean, that there was were... a lot of good things that happened, but I think that moment was more of like a realization of that. Yeah, you know, per se. And I think it was, and like I said, it was hard about the weekend. Is like I think I just dug myself such a hole to start, and then you look at like my last day of competition. It was like actually like performed. It was like, it was it was like how I normally do. Like yeah. obviously, I'm not winning any events, but I'm those like top seven to two, you yeah. know, in, in these workouts, which is like, it's like, oh, like that's kind of how I am. And it's like, it was just on, it was weird not having like it. I think there were so many things that have gone on. It was like, there was no one thing to like, like, oh, why didn't you do well? It's like, I don't really know, but there's a lot of things that have happened and I'm just yeah. like trying to focus on like how I don't make that happen next year. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, let's talk post games for a minute. Yeah. So, competition ends you ended in 14th don't no know idea. no idea yeah i mean okay. I'm, I'm between 10 and 15 yeah yeah okay anyways um <laughs> so what what was what was the week after the games like yeah i mean i think it was like I, I i i can tell you my experience after the 2015 games because that was the one where like i was like nope i'm winning i had the expectations yeah. all that stuff it was a depression yeah like i did not handle it well at all yeah for probably three months yeah like three months i didn't go to the gym i didn't train i didn't stretch nothing <laughs> and and it was too and it was because of the reason i was like do i want to do this again yeah. like i just saw what's possible and like at that point i was like it's very possible that i may never win yeah. i could dedicate a whole nother year of my life and not win again yeah and i was like i don't know if i'm willing to do that um yeah. Because for me at the time, it was like all like, I was like, no, I just want to win. I just like, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm doing. 
um, I didn't care about like my results as long as they were better than everyone else's. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, I was very, fo I was focused on winning and not the process, not each event individually, anything like that. And I, I just went into a depression. I was just, I didn't know who I was, what I was doing. And I just kind of disappeared for three months. Yeah. Um, tell me about your experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, it was a little bit similar, I would say. I mean, didn't last three months. We're still three months, and I feel yeah. like really good right now. I was yeah. able to get back into training. Took like a month off, and was able just to be like, it was a hard decision not to do rogue. But once yeah. I think I decided that I wasn't doing it, it like you lean into the decision. Yeah, leaned into the decision. Like, all right, like let's just focus on what I can focus on. But I think the hardest thing for me after the games was like the. I've, I've always talked about anybody that follows me. Like I said, like knows how much my family means to me yeah. and how important the group that I have around me is. Like, mm -hmm. obviously I, I appreciate the community. No, seeing you, have, their support, you have phenomenal family, the best support crew around you. Yep. It's unreal, you know, and you like anybody that goes out to the campsite sees that we have two RV trailers full of people. My parents invite everybody and everybody to the yep. RV and it's just like this awesome community. And I know that like, I've sacrificed a lot of time being away from them, spent summers like training with Adam instead of going home yep. when I was in school. Did a lot of sacrifices for this dream, this goal that I want. And same thing with like Adam and Jesse. It's like they got families, they have businesses to run, and they take their time to train me. Yeah, you know, it's not like you're not. So it's, blind, it's not you're like not they're to starting them. a training camp, and I'm bringing them all this like fruition of money yeah. and dreams and and all this stuff. It's like they're in it for me, you yeah. know, to like make me the best I can be to follow my dreams, yeah. you know. And I see the effort that they put in with Daniel. Adam, Jesse, my, my, my parents. And then I know that they're doing everything they can to help me succeed. So then if I don't succeed, it's like, well, what does that mean? It's like, well, they did all their jobs. Yep. And then it's like, well, did I not do my job? And mm -hmm. I think that was like hard to look myself in the mirror. And, but it's, I could look myself in the mirror and say that I did it, but it was really hard to do it. You yeah. know, cause it's like, well then I can do that. Cause I feel like I've done everything I can given the circumstances, but it's like, well, the goal wasn't achieved and it's like, well, I know I'm capable of the goal. Yeah. So it's like, why didn't it happen? So, so post post games, looking back at it now, do you feel like you didn't do your job or are you able to see it as just like, this is sport sometimes like luck of the draw of like, you can hit PRs and do everything great and then twist your ankle, walk into your car. And yeah. it's like there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's just kind of the luck of the draw. Sometimes it's like, that's the hand you were dealt. Not ideal, yeah. obviously. Um, but like, how do you look at that? Do you look at that as like, was there something that you could have done differently? I mean, hindsight's always 20, 20, yeah. you know, like I think there's always something that you could have done better, you know? And I think anybody that has had anything like this before is like, you got to find like, I've always said like, <laughs> great things can come from shitty situations. You know, like no matter what it is, it's not like you would ever wish for that shitty situation to of have course. like happen at all because shitty situations are terrible. Yeah. I've dealt with family stuff, like much more serious than just me competing, yeah. you know? But in those terrible situations, like you can find a lot of good things that come from yeah, it. Yeah, you and find think, that silver lining. Like, like yeah. you have to. It's like, I, like that's kind of like how I operate. Like you can't, just focus on the bad. Yep. Like you got to focus on how you can make good from it, you know? And yeah. I think that experience of the whole games is going to like, I'm going to look back when I'm done competing and be grateful that it happened. Oh, you know, my, my 2015 medal. Like I, I said it in interviews for years. I hate that fucking medal yeah. because it represents cut corners. It represents, you know, taking the easy route, all, all the things I did wrong. That's all it reminds me of. Yeah. Now fast forward, you know, handful of years and I have a couple of golds under my belt now. And I know, I know for a fact if I didn't get that silver, like if I had gone in my rookie year and say yeah. I, I won my rookie year, I would have been like, oh, that's how you win. That's the training you do. I train, yeah. I train yeah. for 60 minutes every couple days and I can win the games. Yeah. And then if I won in 2015, it would be, oh, I can have a shitty diet. I can stay up late. I don't need to worry about sleep, recover, any of that. And I would have continued those habits and yeah. it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have put me to where I was. So once again, finding a silver lining in a shitty situation. It took years yeah. <laughs> um, to figure that out. But so I guess with after this season, what, what are the things that you could do differently next season? Like you said, you're dealing with shin splints. You know, that's not really something that you have 
too much control over other than, you know, doing the proper warm ups and stuff like that. But sometimes that shit just happens. Yeah. Um, so like, what, what are some of those things that you, you identified from this last season, not getting the results you wanted that you can apply forward? Yeah. I mean, I think there's obviously like those training things, but I think also there was a lot of stuff like mentally of like, of focusing on the outcome, yeah. like a lot more so. And even though things weren't going well, like still like, it, it was just like a weird thing. I think it was a lot more of the things that I realized coming from this is like getting back to like why I do it. Like I love doing this. I love competing. And that it's like preference a privilege 100%. But that like pressure of like, it, I mean, it comes from you and Tia, you know, like I'm like, <laughs> pre- don't, like, don't like, you put this on me. Don't you <laughs> no, put this no, on no, me. Not at all. And it's like, <laughs> like I hated that you retired. Like, oh yeah. I don't blame you for that one. Like yeah. if, if, I, I, if I were in your in, shoes, I'd be pissed. I'd rather have taken seconds <laughs> my whole career to you than for you to retire and me never have the chance to beat you. Oh, my bad, dude. Well, you, you, had, know, you had one chance. Yeah, I did have one chance <laughs> and I did not take it at all. But like, it's like, you want to compete against the best and you want to see what's possible yeah. and push the envelope. And like, if you do win, you want to like, be no, the I mean, best. It, it was and, like, and it's not like I'm like, I know that I was the fittest in the world in 2022 and 2023. Yeah. Like, there's no doubt about it. Like, you decide that you didn't want to compete, and like, that's part of it. You know, like, you got to be willing to put yourself through it, it for years. I love that you brought this up because I say this all the time when people are like, "Oh, so and so could have won if they signed up." So I'm like, "Then fucking sign up." Yeah, exactly. Then fucking do it. Yeah. But like, no, I'm physically strong <laughs> and I'm mentally strong. Like, yeah. Like it's a it's a full package. You know, exactly. it's like. I don't care how physically gifted you are. If you don't put any effort or time into mental strength, mental toughness, just mental health, well, that's part of it. Yeah. You know, it's it's equivalent to being able to come in and clean and jerk 500, but you have a 12 minute mile. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when somebody sees that, they they look at that and like, oh, well, you should train your mile. Yeah. <laughs> but then when somebody comes in and has a, like can't perform mm-hmm. and it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's all part of it, guys. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like like I was saying, it's just like I think the strides that I've made just like experiencing those things mm-hmm. is gonna go so far. Yep. You know, and I think just like being smarter and taking this time, it's like I feel so good right now, which is like read the why it's like bittersweet watching. It's like I feel yeah. like I could be out there. It's yep. no, but like I didn't do the preparation to be prepared to handle ten events. But see, like you know, like that feeling is so powerful. Oh, 100%. like having that feeling of like on the edge of your seat watching the competitors and you feel that fire starting to burn oh, again yeah. where you're like it's hot I, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and That's it's it. uh yeah it's been good i mean i still like i like pumped i signed up for a powerlifting meet in december and it's like nowhere near like the level of this but like fucking competition yeah and it's like it's something that i can like train for in my training and think about and it like it's like oh i'm gonna push that much well, it's, harder it, it's, you know well it's different it's gonna get you a new experience it, yeah it, you're gonna build up strength in the off season for sure yeah it's uh it's cool to kind of have that goal it's like I'm able to train 100% focused on that with still working on all the things that I need to work on to be ready for next year. Yep. And I think if I was doing rogue, I wouldn't be able to work on all those things. And mm-hmm. it's nice to still kind of have that like competition like goal because like anybody it, that is competitive is competitive in everything that it, they do. It doesn't matter. Even if they do. don't yeah. admit it, like it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's like yeah. you want to win. And it's like you're always like, I'm always trying to like fight that back when I'm like, playing pig with Ellie and like yeah. I shoot a shot and she takes it from like a foot in front of me I'm like I wasn't fucking standing <laughs> like I was standing a foot back from that you know but I'm like nope she made it this is for fun mm-hmm. I am having fun I'm having fun with my girlfriend <laughs> yes. I'm having fun with my girlfriend <laughs> and uh and, and obviously it's good it's like I want to win everything I do and I think you have to have that if you want to be a competitor yeah. like if you can just like happily cheer someone beating you it's like uh you might not have that edge yeah so uh it's uh it's been good i think it's it's was good to come out here and watch the competition uh Mm -hmm. it's that stuff that i'm gonna think about for the next eight months until i have to compete against them again (laughs) so real quick you you just brought her up ellie um i i want to talk we don't need to go too deep into your personal relationship but you're in a very unique situation where you're dating seriously another games competitor yeah. so like i'm i'm in the back warm-up area and i'm i see it as i'm looking at like my personal experience was like sammy i never saw her or i rarely saw her during competition we didn't even sleep in the same yeah. hotel room during competition and then it's not by choice like your girlfriend's chasing the same dream that you're chasing and yeah. you're both really really good at what you do <laughs> so you're there 
and I, I would see you guys in the warm up area together. What's that dynamic like? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I like because the first I, some it, that would be a catastrophic oh, failure, yeah. <laughs> going terribly. But then others, they're like, no, like I respond well to that. I like that. So yeah. I'm just curious on on your take of it. Yeah, no, I mean, so I trained by myself for the first two years that I was at the games. Mm-hmm. Like I trained out of my garage. I took trips to go see Adam, and that's when I would train with like people at the gym, yep. train with Adam or things like that. But never train with anybody high level. And honestly, seeing what you and Tia did, it's like. I know that I could never train with another male athlete that was like, for for a long period of time, right? Yeah, that yeah. was training for the goal that I want. Yeah. You know, like yeah, they're just, a competitor. Yeah, there's no way I could possibly do that. But with the female, it's like you can. And like I love training, talking about what I'm doing. And it's like I would enjoy training with my competitors for the day, but like I would talk everything you know like it's hard like i love talking about cross i love talking about strategy game plan how i'm going to pace this workout yeah you leave a conversation with velner and you're like do i just told him everything yeah, I told oh him no everything. <laughs> secrets. Yeah. uh and, and it probably honestly if you did that it wouldn't have even make that big of a difference exactly you know but uh you're a competitor you want every edge you can you know so but with with a female partner like you can have that you can talk about all those things bounce ideas off of each other and you don't feel that sense of like like you want them to succeed just as much as I want. Yeah. I'm sure you felt that with it's, Tia. It's like for, for me, it, it, I'm like it's it's a the rabbit that all the dogs are chasing. You know, yeah. it's like I'm like you're you're also a very high level games competitor. You yeah. are not my competitor. We've yeah. never competed against each other. But then I know if if I'm within a you know. 10% of you, yeah. I know that is probably a really, really good score. Yeah, no, 100%. And, but then like there's those days where it's like, oh, you know, my train is just going like shit. I feel like shit, whatever. Um, if you get beat in like two workouts back to back. Yeah. Like <laughs> I remember doing an open workout with Pat off season. We weren't doing the announcement and like, dude, he smoked me. <laughs> and like, I was like, oh my God, like, dude, everyone beat me. Mm-hmm. And uh, like the men, and I was just like, I was in my head. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? What's going on? And then like training with Katra and Tia, I, I trained car came over one year before yeah. the games. Um, and it's like, they beat me. It's like, I'm chasing them. Like my life depends on it. Yeah. But if, if they did beat me in a workout, it's like, okay. Yeah. Like, I know I did well because I was within a stone throw of you. Exactly. So it's just a good progress report on a daily basis. Yeah, for sure. And it's, uh, when going into it, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I want Ellie to come over here so I can train and then date her. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not what I wanted. I was, I was actually actively trying to not do that. Mm. You know, oh, and, he's just so irresistible. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's yeah. like, I can't help it, dude. Look at my hair. And she, she, she came in. Uh, she like came in and she's supposed to come for like a week. You yeah. know, and then that week went really well and she decided to stay for three weeks or yeah. four weeks I think it was and then she had to go back for Torian and she's like you know what like I would love to make Let, the let's transition let's do this full time yeah let's yep. do this like I really enjoy this it's a lot different so you guys were not dating yet at this point oh no no okay. no no not at all I mean she like came in and it was crazy honestly our story because that from the day I've met her we've lived in the same house oh shit yeah that's right yeah she so was I was there. staying with some friends and then I was like hey uh, like Ellie's gonna come into town. She wants to train for a week. Is it okay if she like say so she doesn't mm-hmm. have to get a hotel or something like yeah. that? And like, oh yeah, no problem. Like we have an extra spare room, so that's kind of what it was. Yeah. And then she ended up staying. So then she spent three months with me and my friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, it was awesome. And like we're all a good group. But then you start training over summer. It's like you can kind of tell that there's like interest from both sides. Yeah. But it's like I am not doing this. Yeah. Like I am training for the freaking CrossFit games. I am not getting distracted. Yeah. And like for one, like she was, it was training for the 2022 CrossFit games was like the most fun I have ever had training in my life. Yeah. It was awesome. I was like, this is awesome. You got I daily wanna, company on the gym. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, I want to do this for the next five or six years that I'm competing. Yeah. Like, this is awesome. And I was like, if I date her and this doesn't work out, like that's gone. I was like, and I was like, I love her as a training partner. So like, I don't want to date because I don't want this to yeah. happen. And then, I mean, I'm sure she's going to love hearing all of this. She's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I, yeah. I avoided dating her for so long. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it sounds like so long, but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, going into the, like weeks before the games is like, almost started doing the reverse effect of like, I was trying so hard to prevent it that it was like, you're pushing doing her the, away. Yeah. It was yeah. doing like the opposite. And I'm like, you know what? Like, we both obviously have feelings. You can't like, fight love. Yeah, you, you can't, can't, you fight, can't it. fight it. You know. <laughs> so uh, we, we were dating the weeks before the games, but like I was like, 
we're not saying this to anybody. Yeah. Because like, if I happen to go to the games and not do well, everyone's like, oh, he got a new he was training distracted. and distracted training with his, and then, yeah, so I went to the games, one, and it's not like we had like an announcement or anything, but we used to start seeing yeah, things you start on social together, media yeah. and people obviously knew. And then I go and do Rogue and then end up winning again, which is like, it's like, hey, like, this works, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden I do bad this year and people are like, oh, your training partner. It's like, dude, I won the games and won Rogue last year. Yeah. Like, you really think it's because of that? Yeah. Like, it's uh, it's been awesome training with her, you know? Yeah. And like, I think, obviously there's new, like, things that you have to deal with that are mm-hmm. different than what it is because I do care about her performance, you know? Yep. And like, when she doesn't do well, it's like, I feel that. You know, because you want her to succeed and you want Mm -hmm. her to do it. So, yes, that adds a little bit. But the things that it adds for a positive thing is like having someone to lean on and train with and help push me. And like, I can't tell you how many countless days I go into the gym to do rowing intervals by myself. And it's just like, it's like. Like when when I was training for the games, like Sammy talks about all the time, like the last two months before the games, Sammy would train two, three times a day with me because she was like, no, if I want to see you and hang out with you, you're at the gym all day. Yeah. And she's like, I'm not going to sit there twiddling my thumb. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even just that, like Sammy's four foot 11 and fitness is for fun. <laughs> like she's not pushing my paces yeah. at all, but just having somebody oh. there with you, somebody even just in between intervals to share that eye contact. Yeah. Like, geez, all right, yeah. let's go. You know, yeah. it makes the world a difference. Oh, a hundred percent. And it's, I, yeah, it's so good. Have, have you guys ever like, like set up rules for yourselves of like in competition, like, okay, you know, like this is how we are going to conduct ourselves of like oh, for in sure. training. If, if like, yeah, I'm just thinking of like, if one of you is like super upset, well, it'd almost be bad if the other one went over and comforted because it's like, well, no, you need to be warming up for your event because oh, you guys exactly. are on opposite schedules. So like, has that ever been discussed or does it just run smoothly? Oh no. I mean, we get separate rooms at the, yeah. at the games the past. So we've dated for the past two games and it's yeah. like separate rooms. Uh, we do, a debrief at night as a team, yep. but then it's like back to your own rooms, yep. you know? And, and in between events, like obviously we're going up and high-fiving each other, but we train with each other so much throughout the year. It's like, you know when it's a good time to come up yep. and say things, you yep. know? And I think we talk about it going in. It's like, I don't want my highs to affect or my lows to affect Effective. your highs yeah. and then and vice versa, versa. Yep. you know? So I think it's just like being respectful, like let her know that I'm there, but like I mean, you got to deal with your thing. I got to deal with my thing. Like, and, and going into the relationship, it's like, Hey, for the next five years of my life, like CrossFit is my number one priority. And it's like making that clear from the get go is yeah, very it's helpful. Set, setting expectations. Yeah. It's like, Hey, like this is the goal. Like, you want to stay up and watch movies a little late? It's like, I'm going to go to bed. Like, yep. it's like, this is what we have to do for Like, this is like what we do. But in my mind, it's like you sacrifice the next five or six years of your life. And we got the rest of our life can, to do this. You Muhammad know, and, Ali, you can suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. A hundred percent. I had that poster and on I my wall. And I think it's, it's what I think about every day in training to mix those nights where you got to like go to bed a little bit yeah. early and wake up on time and like do old, stay on that routine, eat the right food. And, mm-hmm. Like you think about that, but to have someone that also shares that goal is makes it even a little bit easier. It's like, it's nice. Like, oh, I'm just gonna watch one more episode. But like, no, 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 yeah. we're going to bed, and yeah. it's it's nice to, that we both can help keep each other accountable. You That's know? awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't asked this, but I'm so confident I know the answer. So, like, you've talked about the circle you have around you in competition, like. I think anybody that's in the space knows your parents. They know Adam. (laughs) A lot of people know Jesse, Ellie. Like you have a team around Daniel. um, And, and I like, I know the importance of that. I had that. And like, I preach, I'm like, get a fucking team. Like if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, get a team. Yeah. Um, And like when, as soon as I had this, this confidence, it was almost like a weapon to me of, the people around me don't give a fuck about my performance. Oh yeah. Like, like for me, it was Sammy was just like, you know, after enough competitions and I had some, some blunder or whatever it was. And I'm like, Oh, she's not, she's still here. Yeah. You know, O'Keefe, you know, he'd seen me, you know, compete, (laughs) have some poor luck, make some mistakes, do things wrong. Yeah. And, and then he stuck by my side, you know, Obviously, I, or I hope most people's parents. Yeah. Hey, hey you didn't <laughs> yeah. win the competition. We still love you. Yeah. Um, but I remember through my career, I remember hearing athletes talk about all the time of like, I looked into, I would look into the crowd, find my parents or find my husband, my wife, yeah. whatever it was. And that was my strength. I'm doing it for them. I want to make them proud. And 
And I, I always said like, no, I'm, I'm doing this for me. Yeah. You know, I, I intentionally don't want to know where any of my loved ones are in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to know what box you're in. I don't want to know <laughs> where you are, anything. And it, it gave me this confidence. That I felt like it was, was a weapon that I was like, I can come out here, be totally selfish, focus on myself. And no matter good or bad, I'm walking back. I'm going home to the same hug, the same I love yeah. yous, the same everything. And, you know, like after the 2015 games, you kind of think like, fuck, people aren't going to like me. People are going to love yeah. me. Like whatever sponsors are all going to drop me. All these irrational fears start creeping up. But then once it's tested, like unwillingly, yeah. you have a poor finish. Yeah. And then you come back and it's like, I'm like, oh, Sammy's hug was even sweeter. Yeah. Like Keith's hug was even longer. Like my parents are still happy to see me. Like, did you have any of those those fears going in of like, fuck, people aren't going to like me? Well, we talked about that a little yeah. bit, but like the people in your circle and then like after, like I have to assume that your your crew is fucking awesome. Yeah. So I have to assume they're all still <laughs> right there. Yeah. Um, like did that, was that motivating? How, how did that make you feel? Yeah, I know. I think it was like I have was luckily that was never anything that I doubted. Like I knew that team was around me, but like, when you hear it after the fact is uh, it's still like, it's hard to explain. Like I'm sure you've had those moments where I, I remember standing in the campground after the games and then I got called up to like, just say thanks for everyone coming. And I, that's pretty much all I said. Cause I yeah. can talk after that, you yeah. know, like it's just like, man, it is like, I wish I could really express to the people around me, like how much it means that they're yeah. in my corner. Like I, I'll never be able to do it, you yeah. know? And I just hope that, they know that like I do do this partly for them. Like I, I, it is selfish. Don't get me wrong. When I'm out there on competition floor, I want to compete. I want to win. But like right when I'm done, I want to be with those people. Yeah, 100%. because like they are the people that help make this happen. Yeah. And I think one thing that I got that maybe you never got to get is like after that poor finish, it's like oh well, you aren't my ride or die. Like no. <laughs> like I I found that out about you. Real quick, and that's something that I am not going to forget. Yeah, you know, and I think that was you didn't have that. No, I had that this year. Oh, you, you know, did. Like where I I had this poor finish, and then you kind of see the people, and you're like, yeah, let's oh. talk about that a little bit. I was because... like, oh, I I I understand now. It's yep. like okay. So I I I got my first dose of that in in my weightlifting career. Mm-hmm. You know, I uh, had that my back injury, got that repaired, and. And like the people that I thought were friends, like good friends just wrote me off and the shit they said to me. And then, you know, same thing through CrossFit, you know, you have a bad finish and you see the person that now avoids eye contact with you and you're like, okay. Yeah. Like I can't wait to win again. Yeah. So that when you come up. Dude, hate is such a good motivator. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And I'm also kind of curious. So I, I, almost the opposite experience of like when I came into the sport. I yeah. saw the way some people treated me. Yeah. And just like absolute dirt. And then there one story that I will never forget and it was like it's Brandon I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh I got a guy kicked me out of the gym cuz I wasn't wearing Reebok. I was at mm-hmm. Reebok headquarters. I got thrown out like and rude. Yeah. And uh and I was like no one told me I had to wear certain clothes like Yeah. I was a 23, 20, whatever. I was broken. Yeah. I was wearing whatever O'Keefe gave me <laughs> and, uh, and got thrown out and it was just like so rude. And, and like, we got invited over there. Like their coaches invited us over. We went anyways. Uh, he, he tells us to stand outside the gym until the people were ready for come get us. And I was like, I'm like, O'Keefe, get the truck. Yeah. Like we're out of here. Out of it. 2014 games comes around. I get second place. I'm the only person in the top 10 that doesn't have a shoe and apparel sponsor. And O'Keefe was like, hey, uh, Reebok wants to have dinner with you. And I was like, cool. Sounds good. Uh, The main guy was there. uh, Kept in touch with him for years. Super nice guy. Um, But then this guy that kicked me out came, came in. And Matt, oh, incredible to meet you. Can't wait to have you a part of the family. And basically saying that, I looked at okay, I was like, yo, go get the truck. We're out of here. <laughs> We're out of here, man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, dude, you don't even recognize me. Like yeah. when, I, when I was there, I had a big, big Afro, big homeless looking beard. <laughs> and then at the games, I was, the, my, my barber accidentally shaved off my beard and shaved <laughs> like, so I looked completely different. I was like, no, I remember how you treated me when you had nothing to gain. Yeah. And, and now you're my best friend. I will say there are also people that day one, 
I was like, you were a dick to me? Yeah. Year six, you're still a dick to me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't like you, but I trust you. Yes. I trust you. And like Exactly. You're the same yep. all the way across, yep. you know? Like, but yeah, it's the people that it's like, depending on the results, you get those For friendships. Sure. And so hopefully it wasn't anyone too important in yeah, your circle. Yeah, no, it wasn't too like, <laughs> Yeah, that group's good. But I think it's uh, like, and also like being a competitor, like you, like you almost not try to formulate it, but like you use it. You know? Resentments? Huh? Resentments? Yes. That was my fuel all the yeah. time. Like I like I, I mean, I think people kind of know that like feud between me and Jason a little bit. And it's like it came from I got third, I go into the next year, I do my semi, this guy wins, and I get third at my semi. Yeah. And I'm like and I was honestly pumped with my performance. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I actually had a great weekend and like Yes, I wanted to win, but like, man, dude, I like PR'd my snatch. I like crushed Gretel. And like, I had all these things that were weaknesses before that I did really, really well. And it's like, man, like, I'm not even mad about this. Yeah, third but when, place, when, to be when, when you get personal records yeah. and the performance of a lifetime, it's kind of like, well, yeah, like, when I'm, I had no control. Like, I did awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you see, like, Jason win, and it's like, like, rookie coming in hot. I'm like, man, like, this is what it is. You know, I mean, that was kind of me yeah. last year, you know, and like, I understand it. And then, like a week after you see like Dave Castro post and it's like, I've only seen this from two other people before Matt Frazier and Rich Froning and now Jason Hopper. Oh yeah. Did oh, a post I, I like that. that. And yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, I was like, I mean, I thought me and Dave were pretty cool. I saw him like at the, like, like in 2020 and stuff. And yeah. like, obviously super nice. Like, man, I'm happy for you. And I see other thing. I'm like, okay, Dave. It's like, I'll, I'm going to remember this, you know, and like, it, and it's not like he was trying to like dig me or anything yeah. like that, but now like no, but I like, hate Dave and now I hate Jason, it's, it's you know, all, and it's, it's like, it's nothing that really any of them did, but like, that was my fuel going in. Do, do you know Cooper Marsh? Yep. I didn't talk to him for five years, <laughs> five fucking years. For he, what? He and Sammy were like, they, they lived in Rhode Island together. Like yeah. Jake, Cooper, Matt, uh, like another buddy, like they were a, a group. And yeah. they were the most fun. And then like Cooper and I were friends, like mm -hmm. friends, friends. And, and he put up a post before the Dubai competition. Uh, Cause Jake was competing and I was also competing in 2018. And it was a picture of like Cooper, Jake, and like a couple other buddies, something there. And they're all flipping off the camera. And Cooper's caption was like, fuck anyone in Dubai. That isn't Jake. Like <laughs> has nothing to do with yep. me. I, my name wasn't mentioned. <laughs> yeah. But to me, I was like, you just said, fuck everyone. Yeah. And I'm one of everyone. And I'm one of everyone. Dude, it was to the point. And like Jake and I are friends. Yeah. Like, like Jake is a teenager at this point. Like I would come in to train at Sammy's home gym. Jake would come in to train with me. Um, you know, he had aspirations going to the games. Like, so yeah. he, he would train with me whenever he could. And uh, oh, what was it? It was, oh, then we're in Dubai and Jake had... <laughs> Jake asked me for help on something like, Hey, how, how are you going to approach this workout? And I was like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, no, we're competitors, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like at the gym, we're friends. We're competitors here. Uh, yeah. And then just didn't speak to Cooper for, for years. <laughs> and then it was, I think it was here last year or two years ago. He came up to me and was like, Matt, I, I got to talk to you. And I was like, I'm going to stop you right there. I know what this is about. You did nothing wrong. Yeah. That was me. I used, I like, I made up resentments in my head as fuel. Yeah. And like to the point that I had a folder in my pictures album of pictures and videos. Oh, the yeah. folder was titled fuck wads <laughs> and I would look through it all the time. And it was anytime I saw a podcast, a video, Instagram, I would screenshot it. Any, Dude, anything, any, that's, anything that like pissed me off, I'd put it in there. And anytime I needed a good resentment to make me roll yeah. a little faster, pull yeah. that up. Dude, you're in the old days now. And doing the new days, you can save audio clips. Oh. Yeah. I, Got a couple of those. <laughs> like the one, the one that I, <laughs> Marston, Marston talks about this. Uh, I, I messaged Marston. Um, I was like, hey, I sent him, sent him the YouTube video. I was like, I need this 10 second clip cut out of here. Send it to me in high def. Yeah. And he was like, all right, <laughs> since we have watched it, and it was from the open announcement. It was Dave saying that like people are going to beat Rich's benchmarks, people are going to you know lift more, run faster, like the sport's going to evolve, but nobody will ever be as dominant as him again. And I like, I watched that shit all the time, all the time, yeah. and it was so funny. Like I was at Marston's house like two weeks ago, and he he brought that up. He was like, dude, 
the minute you asked me for that clip, he was like, I knew trouble was yeah. brewing. And I was like, <laughs> <You> yep. <knew. laughs> and then it was one of those things like right after I, I retired, you know, you still kind of hang on to someone's re- resentments and you're like, what is this serving me? Like, yeah. I'm just fucking angry, you yeah. know? And so it's like, you're kind of going through and like deleting that shit. Yeah. And like, you're kind of taking a step back and, and kind of realize like, okay, CrossFit is CrossFit, yeah. but it's not who I am. It mm-hmm. doesn't define me. So like, I have to assume after winning twice, like you're known as the CrossFit guy. Like you're known as the CrossFit champion, kind of whether you like it or not, become your identity. Yeah. How, how did that shift after last year? Yeah, it's been, it's been different, but also not, you know, because okay. like, like I said, how that group of people was like with me no matter what. And like those relationships haven't changed, you know? Yeah. And I think it's been almost like a, it's like, I never would wish that I didn't win the games, yeah. obviously, but now that I did, that can't change, you yeah. know? And I think it's happened. I think there's going to be so much good that comes from it. And it's like this like weight off my shoulder. And it's like, okay, it's like, now you get to hear everyone talk about like mm-hmm. Adler and all these guys. It's like, okay. Yep. It's like, yep. Like keep talking. Cause like I'm saving it, you I know? And it's this. like, it's, uh, it's been so good. And like I put out that I'm doing this powerlifting comp and you see everyone like I've not everyone. I get people send me clips talking about it and like, Oh, what numbers I'm hitting all this stuff. And it's like, okay. Yeah. It's like, you watch, you yep. know, and it's like I love that. You it's just that. like a little bit of like, just lean on it, you yep. know, and it feels good. And just like, you do it for yourself, but like a huge bonus to it is like, kind of St- putting up that st- finger, yeah, sticking I, it I mean, to other people. It's yeah. just like, yeah, that's yeah. right. It's gonna and feel I, good to look back and, and flip off that ball that just bucked yeah. you off. Yeah. So man, it's uh, it's it's awesome motivation going into this year, and it's gonna be like really fun to do it yeah you know and i think it's uh watching this competition and like after like the games like obviously like you have the doubt and like everything going on about the performance but like g- going in now and like feeling healthy it's like the motivation is like higher than ever and yeah it's just like it feels good like to go out there and just like like it feels like almost like free like you just go out there and so like that, that, do that, what you that's, need to do that's kind of what i was hoping the the results of that would be of like oh i just had and I, I don't mean to project anything on you, yeah. like as an athlete, the nightmare oh, 100%. of like, like that's the thing that you think you're, about. You're the repeat champion and you show up and you're like, this ain't going to go well. Yeah. And like, you know it for the weeks or months leading up. You're like, fuck, this ain't good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but it, it's awesome to hear that you're finding that silver lining of like, oh, I'm, I'm still me. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still who I am. I still, I still love all the people around me. They love me. And it's almost like you're a weapon now of like, Oh, go ahead. Like, it doesn't matter if I lose. Yeah. I'm going to come back. I'm going to oh, get back up. Yeah. Like and that's, 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 that's I'm going to come feeling. back stronger. I'm going to learn my lessons. I'm going to come back. Yeah. That's awesome to hear, man. That's wild. Yeah. But, dude, thank you so much for sitting yeah. down with me. I think, I, I don't know about you, but I'm <laughs> stretched. Sweat, I'm yeah. sweat through my shirt and shorts. So I think we'll wrap it and yeah. go uh, hit some AC. Dude, let's do it. Hell yeah. Awesome.